We are honored to have amongst us a special guest today who is the director of the Center for Research, Innovation and Design at the School of Architecture, Art and Design, the American University in Dubai. On behalf of GEMS Modern Academy, we welcome Dr. George Kashami. I'm glad to be here and thank you for providing me the opportunity to address the young fresh minds of today, uh, who are the future and the decision makers uh, of tomorrow. Uh, today, I will be talking about design thinking in general and ideation in specific, as you mentioned, uh, and how they both relate to the field of uh, architecture. So I would like to start by establishing an understanding of the design as a whole versus what is known by design thinking. Uh, design with a capital D can be seen as the umbrella where all activities happen in order to create a product. Design thinking, aka DT focuses on the process of design rather than the product of design. And within that process, it tackles mostly the human aspect of it. It is what we call human centric. So it is important to understand that design is not only process, but also product creation. Design thinking as the CEO of IDEO, Tim Brown puts it best, is a human centered approach to innovation that integrates the need of people, the possibilities of technology, and the requirement for business success. Of course, this is very general, yet comprehensive. So it rotates around three main aspects, as you can see here in the triad. The desirability, what is needed to desire, uh, you know, or desired by individuals. The feasibility, what is possible with the current technologies, and the viability, that relates to longevity and sustainability of a product. So it is important to understand that design thinking is not linear, but more holistic. So one can go back and forth, evaluate and reevaluate from identifying uh, driving questions to inspire new thinking, uh, challenging assumptions and push, push the envelope to get breakthrough ideas, which is we're going to talk about it, generating ideas, produce prototypes, test them, learn from them, and so forth. Now, what all of this is about has to do with architectural design. To parallel that with the architectural education, it is fundamental to know that architects are creative problem solvers that design spaces for humans' activity. Designing spaces is quite complex as it deals with different layers, uh, such as context, culture, theories, etc. The main focus today is to shed light on the think tank or the place where design is exercised. It is what we call the design studio, aka atelier. It is where the iterative process, which is the main driver to generate creative projects. The studio is a place where students learn how to design using all phases of design process. Simply put, architecture with a capital A, as you can see here, has three main qualities that must be balanced in order to create the right decision, uh, design, and of course, decision. We call this the Vitruvius triad. Notice this can be compared with the previous triad. They are utility, which deals with the function of the design, beauty, that deals with the physical form of the design, stability, that deals with the integrity of the design and its capacity to structurally hold and stand. In addition to Vitruvius triad, there is an important connection to humans with a big H. Aspect in any architectural design, the human aspect is important. The human need, activity, and experience. Take for example, something as simple as a chair. It has a specific form, with a specific function and a certain stability to stand. It rotates around the human need for it, so activities can occur, and by that allow the human experience to manifest. So how do we architects do that? Ideas and design process happen in what we call the design studio. As you can see here, the general and typical studio design process Again, you can parallel that with the design thinking. We can see the pre-design, the design, and the post-design. Of course, for example, the pre-design has a research component such as data collection, uh, uh, 
looking at precedents, looking at desires, needs, objectives, analyzing them so that you can go to the design itself by looking at the ideas, concept, sketches, drawing, generating prototypes, and try them. Then to move to the production period, that is actually the post design, which the result, the output, outcome, the impact, feedback, and of course that deals with the presentation and so forth. So uh, in order to make this happen, it is important to manage well the time. So each phase is tackled in a balanced matter. Here you can see a timeline for a typical design project that takes, for example, three weeks to accomplish. As you can see, many of these stages can overlap, so it allows similar to design thinking, the back and forth exercise. As you can see, for example, the research, the program, and uh, for example, the design, the presentation, and how they can overlap. So the typical design studio project flow has to process, has the process from the abstract to the concrete, or to put it in better uh, term, from the immaterial to the material. It starts in general from the mind, as you can see here, and then transmit on paper as a communication tool. Then it is translated in small prototypes. We call these physical study models. Then finally, of course, in real life, built as a real scale uh, for human usage and experience. Here, I'm going to show you a little bit uh, a sample of um, what usually we do in Design Studio. So as you can see here, this is just general site location. And then the idea is to look at the site, analyze the site and start creating sketches for the potential design that is in this situation, a building. So you could see these are sketches on paper. So it goes to paper. And then, of course, this moves to actually creating uh, sketches and analyzing what is the function inside that space and how that function will work. And then transmitting that to the site itself, drawing what we call floor plans, as you can see here. And then by that, of course, producing drawings, as you can see that relates to the sketch and of course showing uh, the physical model as you can see here and this is another example of a floor plan with a physical model on the right <clears throat> of course in the professional world this goes further than the production of a physical model for example, it goes, as you can see here in this image, as a real size building, uh, such as a renowned masterpiece here called The Falling Water by Flank Road Wright. So, therefore, the main idea in any design is by far one of the most important phases, if not the most important. At least this is from the architectural perspective, and of course, the design perspective overall. In the design studio, we have what is called studio culture. In that, I find values that are fundamental for ideas to flourish. Think of it like a plant or a flower. In order for it to grow, it needs the right ingredients, soil, water, sun, temperature, and so forth. It needs to feel safe, secure, and confident to express itself. It also needs the messy part, you know, for example, if you look at this lotus, the lotus is a beautiful flower, but it needs the mud to grow. And that is a very important aspect that you need to keep in mind. For ideas to grow, it needs the right environment. In architecture, we call it the studio culture. It is a place where brainstorming happens. It is a place that one must free think without judgment challenge basic assumptions, share information and knowledge, collaborate with everyone in a respectful manner so everybody feels safe and secure to exchange thoughts and innovate. It's exactly how ideation is. 
So it is a place that has critical thinking, but in a constructive and positive manner. It is important when one wants to ideate, it needs to liberate one's mind. As Paul Brandt puts it, don't tell me the sky's the limit when there are footprints on the moon. So the limitation is just in the mind and the sky is only the beginning. And this, I will move forward to one of the research that uh, we've been doing at the at the university and it is my research. seen is uh, just an animation uh, of actually the idea of creating gravity defiant architecture. It is a very challenging uh, idea, but yet through the design process thinking and through the uh, trials and error, uh, the research that rotates around that, it actually uh, about how we can liberate architecture from the ground so that it can float in the air. And of course, it is on itself kind of like an, um, um, making the possible impossible possible. Of course, having more land to plant and allowing architecture to move ahead. And instead of being fixed in one place, but to move and also to go to the outer space. So this allows a lot of opportunities, such as by liberating the architecture. Uh, for example, one can be safe from earthquakes, floods, the idea of that symbol that is a challenge of liberating it from the ground. Here is one of the prototype that actually I uh, exhibited in one of the exhibitions was here it's in Dubai Design Week. And then you could see the, the, the video so that you can learn more and you could see the actual physical model of that prototype. <laughs> So I would like to end uh, this by saying that um, it is very important that everyone, each and every one of you, know that they have a spark and is unique. Each one can create, contribute, and make a difference to allow for that spark to shine even more like a star in the night sky. So always think to be that star.
Thank you. And uh, if you would like to know more about the work and the research, please feel free to, you know, to, to check out my Instagram or YouTube channel. Guys, isn't that so cool? Designing solutions, considering the factor of gravity, the brainstorming technique in ideation. Thank you, sir, for bringing in such a different perspective in the field of design.